The first place you'll want to go when you log into REDCap is to your My Projects page. This has a list of all the REDCap projects that you have access to. It will give you the name of the project, some basic information like the number of records and fields in it, and the type of project, and it will tell you the project status. Projects that are in production will have the little green check marks, and projects that are in development will have the wrench. You can organize your projects into folders by clicking on the Organize button. Here, you'll give your project a name, and then you can choose how to color code the folders. Next, you can put projects in a specific folder, and it will classify them for you on your My Projects page. This is very useful when you get to the point where you have a lot of projects. The training video link shows a number of videos that are put out by Vanderbilt University on how to use REDCap. They're good videos, but we recommend that you use the videos we provide instead. This is because our videos will always be relevant to our current version of REDCap, where Vanderbilt's videos can either be a little bit older, or they'll be made for the version of REDCap Vanderbilt is currently on, which usually is not the same as ours. Our videos also will talk about institutional policies and go over best practices. You can find our videos by going to our REDCap info page. On the REDCap info page, you'll just go into REDCap videos and find the topic you're interested in. All the videos have been timestamped for your convenience. The Help and FAQ page is maintained by a committee within the REDCap consortium. It is usually kept very up to date and it's a great resource if there's something that you want to check quickly or if you get stuck on a specific problem. Inside a REDCap project, there are two main landing pages. The project setup page is the main landing page while the project is still in development. Once the project has been moved to production, the project home page will be the main landing page. You can see what the project status is by looking on the left hand menu. To manage your record in REDCap, you'll go to the Add Edit Records page. Here, you can jump to an existing record from the drop down list, and it will take you to the record home page. The record home page will show you all the instruments in the project the status of this particular record for each of the instruments, red for incomplete, yellow for unverified, green for complete, and gray for never been touched. It also have a drop-down menu where you can choose actions that will affect the entire record, such as downloading a zip of uploaded documents or downloading a PDF of all the record data. You can jump to a specific instrument by clicking on the status bubble. And in here I can make any changes to the record that I needed to. To add a new record, you'll go to the Add Edit Records page, and click Add New Record. Here you can see the record home page is blank, and I can jump straight to the first instrument. Basic data entry in REDCap is very easy. Text fields you simply type in. It's important to note that when I'm moving between fields in REDCap, I'm hitting the Tab button, not the Enter button. The Tab button will move you between fields. The Enter button will kick you back out to the record home page. This field has been validated as a date, and this example project illustrates three different ways people might specify what format the date should be in. There's the suggestion in the text box itself, the note to the right of the text box, and then the field note directly beneath it. This field's been validated as a number. If I try to enter text in the field, I'll get a pop-up letting me know that that value is inappropriate for the field and it won't let me enter it. It's also been provided with a specific range it expects the answers to be in. If my answer falls outside of that range, I'll get another pop-up suggesting I check it for a typo. However, it will accept an answer outside of this range to allow for outliers. There are three types of multiple choice questions in REDCap. Radio buttons are select one, check boxes are pick all that apply, drop downs will allow you to start typing things in, there are also slider fields where you can express the strength of a sentiment. REDCap has descriptive fields where different files can be uploaded such as this picture. It also makes it possible to hide fields unless participants enter a certain way. Here, when I click No, 
a new field was added, Upload My Favorite Picture. And I can upload a document as I want. There's also an e-signature field, which allows me to electronically sign the document. At the bottom, I can choose Form Status, and then I have multiple save options. I can save and exit the form, save and stay, or save and go to the next form. You can see these options are also provided floating in the top right. This gives me the option to save while I'm in the middle of data entry. Nothing that I enter will be saved unless I actually hit the Save button. Here we have an example of a matrix field with a number of questions along the side and then one set of answer choices along the top. Matrix fields can be either checkboxes or radio buttons. Finally, we have calculated fields. Calculated fields perform a calculation for items within the project. You can see that the answer is provided on screen right now, but that's just being done by JavaScript in the browser. My actual answer to this will not be saved until I actually hit the Save button. Until I hit the Save button, my answer has not been sent to the server and there's no actual value in that field. Finally, we have repeating instances. Not every project will use these, but many, especially newer projects, will. This allows me to enter the same type of information multiple times using the same questions. And I have a new save option here, save and add new instance. This way I can add multiple favorite movies for one person. When I'm done, I can save and exit the form, and I'll see that statuses have been updated on the record homepage, and all of my favorite movies have been added below, so I can jump specifically to one instance if I need to. There are two more important features when it comes to data entry. The first is the data history feature. You can find this by clicking on the H next to the field. This will show you all the information that's been entered in a field, who entered it, and when. It can help you track changes made to a specific field. The other is putting in the field comments. This can be found by clicking on the little speech bubble next to the field. Here, you can enter information about the field. Once you've entered it, the speech bubble will turn yellow on the form. This is a great way to communicate back and forth with a project manager, especially in situations where the person doing data entry and the project manager aren't necessarily working the same schedule. Finally, there's the Record Status Dashboard. You can find this on the left-hand menu. The Record Status Dashboard has a list of all the records in the project. It shows you what their status is on each form, and it gives you an option to jump either to the record homepage or to the specific field within that record. Next, we'll take a look at pulling data out of REDCap and how to create reports within REDCap.